And now for a 21 Investigate special report. A Fort Wayne woman says the father of her two children didn't have to die. Jonathan Olwine was being held in the Allen County Jail when he attempted suicide and then died two days later. His family believes the Fort Wayne Police Department and the Allen County Sheriff's Department didn't do enough to keep him safe. 21 Alive's Julian Tikarim reports. When we heard about Jonathan Olwine's suicide inside the Allen County Jail last month, we wanted to know more. So we filed a public records request to see what landed him in jail in the first place. This is what we uncovered, body camera video we showed to his family. And a warning, the video you're about to see is disturbing. September 12th, just after noon. Get back, get back, Taser, Taser, Taser! You're watching a responding officer's body cam video. Right before this, police say a detective spotted 35-year-old Jonathan Olwine walking in the middle of oncoming traffic. When he tried to get him out of harm's way, the detective says Olwine was aggressive, walking toward him and had a thousand mile stare. He says he tried to stop him, but instead Olwine threw a punch. Relax, relax man, you're gonna get the taser again. Just over a month later, Olwine would wind up dead by suicide. We showed the video obtained by 21 Investigates to Olwine's ex-wife, Trisha. He's clearly in psychosis. She says her ex was diagnosed with schizophrenia. He wound up in prison after burning down the family's home in 2019 and was released this past summer. Trisha says she's had to keep her distance to protect their two children. It took our home burning down in order for him to get help. Help, she says he clearly needed the day he was arrested downtown. Oh. During the arrest, you can hear Olwine tell officers about his mental state. Oh, um, they shouldn't have taunted him. Well, this close to getting on cops, I think. They should have called the crisis team. They should have listened when he said, I'm a schizophrenic. <laughs> But 21 Investigates has learned the Fort Wayne Police Department doesn't have a crisis intervention team. It was disbanded in 2018. Now, the Fort Wayne PD says all officers are trained in crisis intervention. They receive three to five days of mental health training in the academy. In your opinion, that's not enough? Correct. Lisa Ganaway's son was a schizophrenic and died from sepsis in a North Carolina jail. She's on the board of NAMI Fort Wayne, the local chapter of the National Alliance of Mental Illness. What's disturbing to me is that um, initially they're just worried about what charges they are going to charge him with. They aren't worried about him at all. We had her watch the entire video, which shows the initial scene and the ambulance ride to the hospital. Um, I know he wasn't acting rational, um, but right there tells you there's an issue. Can you tell me who he is? He's not a real person. Uh, that's, 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 that's impressive. impressive. Not everybody's cut out to be a CIT officer. In my opinion, the, the police need to use this as a training video of maybe how they could handle the situation better. Well, hopefully he's just going to go boop, boop, for a little bit. 21 Investigates asked for a response from the Fort Wayne police, but they denied our request for an on-camera interview. Olwine was charged with battery of a law enforcement officer. Both Ganaway and Olwine's ex-wife believe someone dropped the ball when the decision was made to send him to the Allen County Jail instead of a behavioral health facility. You can't just throw somebody who's sick inside of the jail like that. Like, what do you think's going to happen? Did the Sheriff's Department do everything in its power to prevent the suicide of Jonathan Olwine? We follow our policies, and to my understanding, we have followed our policy in this matter. Sheriff Troy Hirschberger runs the county jail. Should Jonathan Olwine have been in jail in the first place? Was that the right place for him? I, I can't answer that. I don't know specifically as to what his personal issues were. Um, for him to be in jail, there would have had to have been a criminal charge for him to be housed in uh, the block that he was. The Sheriff's Department tells 21 Investigates Olwine was put in general population and after just over four weeks attempted suicide in the shower. He died two days later. 
We do not want to see any prisoner die in our facility. Is the criminal justice system failing folks with mental health problems? Well, the criminal justice system isn't set up to be in the mental health business, or at least the corrections county jail side of things. We're not a hospital. You can't throw somebody in a cage who is playing in the road and completely out of their mind. Like, what is that going to do to him? It's only going to further hurt him. Trisha Olwine says the system failed her ex-husband. She hopes sharing her story will bring change to a criminal justice system that doesn't prioritize mental health. Now my two children have to navigate through life without their father. None of this would have happened if he would have just got the proper medical treatment. They took him to the hospital for his cuts and scratches. You know, they didn't check on his mental health. Our investigation raised even more questions, including did the outdated setup of the Allen County Jail contribute to Olwine's death? One county commissioner says yes. We'll explore that part of the story in our next 21 Investigates report. For 21 Investigates, I'm Julian Tikaram. I know he was in there, like, scared to death, seeing these things. And that's what hurts you? Yeah, like, that he had to suffer for, like, over a month until he, like, he couldn't take it anymore. Trisha Allwine says the father of her children was mentally ill. She says he wound up in the Allen County Jail and then died by suicide. She believes local law enforcement did not do enough to prevent the tragedy. But as 21 Investigates reporter Julian Tikaram reports, she also believes the setup of the jail itself contributed to his death. A federal judge says the jail is overcrowded and underfunded. The ACLU argues it's outdated, making it hard for confinement officers to monitor the inmates. He just needed his medicine. Like he was in there alone and scared and seeing things and and hearing things until he couldn't take his mind anymore and he took his life. 35 year old Jonathan Olwine attempted suicide in the Allen County Jail on October 11th. He died two days later. This one's careful. A father of two, his ex-wife Trisha says he loved being a dad. My role as a mother was so easy because he just did everything. He was so hands-on. She says he was also a diagnosed schizophrenic who had been treated at Parkview Behavioral Health. She says he had run-ins with Fort Wayne police and served time in prison before his most recent arrest. Get back! Get back! Taser! 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 Captured on this body cam video obtained by 21 Investigates, police say Olwine was walking in and out of traffic downtown on September 12th. They say he punched an officer. Oh, uh. Police took him to the hospital and then to jail. It's just not safe and it's harmful and it's dangerous and they're just not equipped. We do not want to see any prisoner die in our facility. Allen County Sheriff Troy Hirschberger concedes there are problems with the current jail. Uh, when you asked if we're equipped for it, we do what we can with what we have. He points out the jail was built more than 40 years ago in 1981. We're not a hospital and what we were originally designed for was a temporary holding facility for pretrial detainees as well as sentenced misdemeanors. There's currently a class action suit against the county. It claims prisoners are not adequately monitored by staff. It cites a linear setup which creates blind spots or poor sight lines, making it harder for officers to keep an eye on inmates. Do you think that inmates and your officers will be safer if the sight lines in the new jail are improved? Obviously a modern structure makes it a little bit easier for us where one person isn't forced to watch in a linear jail like what we have. Officials say Olwine made his suicide attempt in the shower. Well, somebody's in the shower, we can't obviously go take showers or put any kind of camera system on a shower. But what, we, what new jails are designed today is those showers don't have closed doors. They would have curtains where you could see feet below type thing. Jonathan Olwine's family believes poor sight lines made it hard to keep him safe. And County Commissioner Therese Brown agrees. Do you believe that poor sight lines may have contributed? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Brown is adamant the county needs a new jail. Every individual that's incarcerated, whether guilty or pretrial, deserves to have a place to be in that their safety is of the utmost uh, importance. It's sad. Trisha Olwine is worried about the inmates who are inside right now. Even if the county started digging today, a new jail wouldn't be finished for years. It should be shut down until they can like take care of the inmates. Family members say Olwine should have been sent to a behavioral health facility instead of the jail, a place they say was not set up to properly care for him. Daddy, is a tater He was the best father. He was so hands on. I just want to make sure that I fight and that that and that there's change so it will make some kind of difference. This incident report obtained by 21 investigates says investigators retrieved copies of video from Olwine cell block. 21 investigates has requested a copy of that video. The sheriff's department tells us they can't release it yet because the matter is still under investigation. For 21 Investigates, I'm Julian Tikaram. Julian, thank you. Allwine's family says the problems go well beyond the structure of the jail. They say someone in the system from his arrest to his death should have taken his mental health more seriously. You can hear their allegations and a response from officials in part one of the story, which is online right now at 21alivenews.com.